Okay, are we ready to call the order? All right, we're going to call the meeting on March 3rd, 2015 to order for the Board of County Commissioners of Adams County. Can you please join me? Uh, well, actually, let's do roll call first. Commissioner Tedesco. Commissioner Odoricio. Present. Commissioner Henry. Yes. Commissioner Hansen. Here. Commissioner Pulowski. Here. Can you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Do we have any awards and presentations? Okay, we're going to open this up for, open the uh, floor up for public comment. Do we have any citizens that have signed up to speak? We do have one person right now and then the rest are for land use. Thank you. And who's the first person? Jean Potman. Can I have Mr. Putman uh, approach the podium? And uh, do you need help with the microphone, sir? No, I guess I'm going to stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adams County Commissioners, I'm Jean Putman. I am retired from the city of Thornton. I am a longtime uh, transportation engineer and the reason for me being here today is um, I'm a member of the National Committee on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and about 18 months ago uh, CDOT sent a person to me uh, concerning lighted street name signs and he came in and uh, saw me and his concept put light bulbs in my head. Uh, right now, about 50% of all deaths occur at night and 50% occur during the daytime. However, when you look at vehicle miles traveled, it's five times more vehicles traveled during the daytime than at night. With that comparison, you are five times more susceptible to being in a fatal crash at night as you are during the daytime. Nighttime is a problem and I have been working for about the last year. I first went to the Federal Highway Administration um, Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Team. I got their blessing on this. They say it's compliant. They suggested that I do some research. In January, I talked to two members, one from the Transportation Research Board and one from the Texas Transportation Institute down in Texas. We have submitted a application to the Transportation Research Board to test these signs to find out if what we think will occur will occur. On, on that sheet that was handed out, you'll see a, a one sheet that shows images of the sign. One of them shows a set of signs during the daytime and one at night. You may have seen some signs that flash, like on stop signs, show a red flash. However, the, the, the testing that's been done shows that that creates a lot of glare to the motorist, to the point where you cannot see the image for about three quarters of a second after the flash because your uh, pupils of your eyes dilate and you can't see. So what I would like to ask is under the manual, if you do testing, you have to have the approval of the agency that you would do to put the signs up and I'd like to use Adams County. And as part of the application for funding, research grant, I would like to ask that the county become an ally to this research uh, project. And what we would do is provide the signs, do all the testing, 
and what have you. Uh, I have one person that's working with us on this project. His name is David Keith. He is a fellow of the uh, National Illumination Engineer Society. He is on the Roadway Lighting Standards Committee. Committee. He and I are working on this project. And so I would like to request that I be able to uh, work with county staff, uh, go over what I'm planning to do, and see if I can get a letter of support as an ally to this research. And that's the end of my call. Thank you, Mr. Putman. Do, uh, it's my understanding that what might be most appropriate would be for us to follow up with a study session on this, but at this time I would uh, offer the floor to any of our fellow commissioners to ask Mr. Putman questions that they might have or make statements. Uh, Commissioner Henry. Actually, I, I would like to make a statement. I'm all for absolutely being part of it. Um, and I think before we do a study session that uh, Mr. Putman probably needs to get a hold of uh, Ray Gonzalez and set up a meeting with him and have a conversation in regards to that. We had a discussion this morning before this meeting. Oh, well, I'll see how you are. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else? Commissioner Hansen. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think that's fine. Oh, wow, that's nice. We do have a, looks like a demonstration at the back of the room. Are you trying to tell us something? Yeah, you're trying to tell us to stop. <laughs> this, this is uh, David Keith. Was well, that a message for Gene? Uh, he, is the, uh, he is the one who is on the uh, Illumination Engineering Society. He is one of the cohorts in this uh, project on these signs. And uh, he picked it up uh, today at the manufacturer in Boulder and brought it down here. I wanted you to be able to see what it looks like. That's, that's great. I think that's interesting. I, uh, we have some similar things in my house at Christmas. Um, <laughs> I, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I think it's fine. Um, and actually, it doesn't sound like it's going to cost any time or resources, and I don't even think I personally feel like I need a study session if, if our staff is okay with it. Um, I'm okay with the study session, too, if there's more to be decided, but if it costs no time and no resources, I don't see any reason why, there's a reason why we wouldn't want to be a part of it. At this time, unless there's somebody who disagrees, I heard kind of some up here that most of the commissioners would agree with that assessment that we'll let Mr. Putman work with staff and if the staff feels that a study session is necessary then they can let us know otherwise uh, I think you're hearing us say good luck work with staff and we look forward to seeing how this turns out great yes. very good thank you Mr. Putman go, Gene. thank you Thanks, are there any other public comments or communication uh, not relating to a hearing or to one of the cases that we'll have later Hearing none, then I'll, we'll move on. Are there any communications from elected officials? All right, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. At this point, we're going to move on to uh, new business. Do we have any uh, updates from the county manager? Yes. Uh, good morning, commissioners. We have three items for your consideration this morning. Um, the first one is a resolution accepting a proposal from Family Tree Incorporated for providing housing and domestic violence services for tempor temporary assistance for needy families, commonly referred to as TANF. Uh, Heidi Ellis is here, and she will talk through it with purchasing. Good morning, commissioners. You have before you a uh, copy of the memo and resolution for the uh, agenda item I'm presenting um, on Family Tree, Inc. The Adams County Human Services Department currently provides programs that are designed to stabilize, strengthen, and connect children and families with community services. The Human Services Department received the Temporary Assistance for Needy Family Grant, which is a TANF grant, from the federal government to assist with the goals of the Human Services Department's Children and Family Divisions Program Services. A request for proposal was performed for the services of a qualified organization to provide housing and domestic violence services for TANF. The solicitation was posted on Rocky Mountain e-purchasing 
system on January the 9th, 2015, and closed on January 27, 2015. One proposal was received from Family Tree Inc., and it, it was evaluated with the following criteria. The offer's ability to provide domestic violence shelter and counseling to adults and children, the offer's fee structure, and the organizational operation budget. Um, Family Tree received 95% uh, uh, score in a proposal. Purchasing and the human service staff reviewed the firm's fees and it was determined their fees are considered fair and reasonable for the scope of services. Purchases, purchasing is in an agreement with the award recommendation to Family Tree Inc. in the amount of $114,540 for the first year of services. Okay, do we have any questions from the commissioners? No? Any questions from staff? All right, at this point, do I hear a motion uh, to approve the resolution accepting proposal from Family Tree Incorporated to provide housing and domestic violence services for temporary assistance for needy families? So moved. Second. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Thank you very much, Ms. Ellis. Thank you. Uh, our next item um, is a resolution approving addendum one with um, Eon Enterprises Incorporated, uh, DBA Eon Office Products um, for annual office supplies. Ben DiRomanis. DiRomanis, close enough. DiRomanis, I was close. Uh, with purchasing is here to talk through that as well. Good morning. In 2013, the county posted a solicitation on Rocky Mountain e purchasing system seeking a primary contractor to supply all county departments with their annual office supplies. After a thorough RFP evaluation process that included multiple county departments, the contract was awarded to local Denver contractor Eon Enterprises for one year with the option to renew for two additional years. By using Eon Enterprises Incorporated as its primary provider of office supplies, the county has improved tracking and control of its annual office supply expenditures with the purchasing department continually monitoring usage. During the initial year of the contract, Adams County has been genuinely pleased with the service provided by Eon Enterprises. Given this, it is recommended that Adams County renew its contract for the second term with Eon Enterprises Incorporated to be the primary provider of annual office supplies for an estimated amount of $122,088.30. Are there, are there any questions from the uh, commissioners? I have uh, Commissioner Pulowski. Thank you, Vice Chair. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm just, uh, this is kind of my bias, I guess, overall, and it has nothing really specifically to do with this, but I assume that this company is from a in Adams County. Is it located in Adams County? No. Is it no? In Adams or is it? It's in Denver. I'm not sure of the it's actual Denver. Yeah, Adams I, County address <clears throat> or if it has in Adams County. Right. See. I, I just I would like us to support our local businesses as much as possible, and that's just an overall blanket statement for staff. Whenever it's possible, that that's what we need to do. I, it's my belief. It's our Adams County taxpayer dollars, and I'd like to see them stay as local as possible. Just in general, a comment. Thank you, Commissioner Pulaski. I have Commissioner Hansen has a comment or question. Hansen? I mean, Henry. Henry. <laughs> Hansen. I got hand, hand. <laughs> Hand in hand right here, I'm sorry. Henry. I know we look alike. I've been called <laughs> Actually, you know, um, Commissioner Pawlowski, it's possible that we could do a study session. I'd like to see us where we um, actually give local businesses a couple of extra points for being in Adams County, and that would give them a little bit more of a leg up to compete with companies outside the, the county. So that would be, I'm also interested in something like that. That's the only way that the purchasing department would be able to help right. in doing that and making it fair. And then and just to add on to that, people don't know where I guess I come from or where I sit, and so I just wanted to just throw that out. So it's nothing specific on what we're talking about necessarily today. It's just in general, if we can kind of look at something like that, I would really appreciate it. So thanks anyway. Uh, Commissioner Hansen, <laughs> would you like you have a question? Question about, about this. I, I um, 
You know, there's been some controversy in the past associated with our office supplies, specifically as it relates to some of our other elected offices. Um, you know, had concerns about, you know, wanting to use the vendors that they typically use or finding particular office products that were cheaper with someone else as opposed to the preferred vendor. And so I, I just want to know what we've, you know, done, you know, what, what the experience was over the last year in terms of the utilization of this supplier uh, organization-wide, and secondarily, what um, if you've reached out to the, since we basically turned over virtually every elected official as it is anyway, um, talk to them about um, this contract and, and their, their usage of it. Have, have we reached out to, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the exact question that you were. Uh, Commissioner Hanson, if you could clarify specifically what the question is, so, because I think I heard a couple of them in there. There were two questions. Right. And I said actually there are two questions. Um, the first question is, is what's the usage of this contract by our other elected officials last year? And secondly, have we reached out to the current elected officials about this contract? Uh, I haven't reached out. I do know our expenditures for last year were $119,245.15. I see some people commiserating over there. They might be bailing you out or they might be saying, we've got information for you later. They yeah. might just yeah. leave you up there. Do we have yeah, uh, this <laughs> wasn't my project originally, so. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. And if you could uh, state your names for the record and then. Uh, Kim Rowland, Purchasing Manager. Thank you, Kim. Go ahead and please uh, help us. Um, we do try to incorporate the entire county's usage with EON. It is not um, an exclusive contract where we can go out to other suppliers if we need to for certain things, but we typically get, at least on an annual basis, if not more often, a report from EON that does show our complete usage. So we are seeing more and more individuals throughout the county using this. Because, you, you know, I. I Every time I look out in the audience, I see people that have been here 18 months or less. And I, and I want you to understand that this office supply contract has been extraordinarily controversial over the last three to four years. And the reason why it's been controversial is just because a lot of our uh, fellow elected officials um, basically just wanted to do uh, and purchase things the way they wanted to purchase things. You know, whether it be a yeah. copier or a pencil, it didn't really, it didn't really seem to matter. Um, and it had been a struggle in the past uh, to get people to do it um, because the more usage we have, you know, the better prices that we're going to get. Um, and at the end of the day, that's the whole purpose of doing a contract like this in the first place is Correct. to be able to kind of bring everything together and provide the best value and best service that we can for, for our office supplies. And at $119,000, that doesn't seem like that's very many office supplies for an organization of our size. So my, my guess is there's a lot of people that are not using that contract. So I want to know, because I, I have a concern about that. Because if people are going out and using their finances, they're using their, their budget on office supplies that may or may not be the best price or the best value or we, what we contracted for, that can be a problem for the organization. And because we have so many new elected officials, I think it would be appropriate for us to, you know, engage them, you know, right now to talk about how we can utilize this. So maybe I have more institutional knowledge sure. than other people do, but, but that's been the situation in the past. Commissioner, it sounds like from this item, we have potentially two items to talk to you about the study session. And so what we'll do, we'll come back to study session. We'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of sort of, you know, the first issue of, of purchasing and giving priority to local companies. We'll also come back and give you a report on total office expenditure spend and how much of it's EON. And proactively, we'll go out and make sure we're communicating with the other offices. I appreciate that. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of opportunities now, I think, to work with people. I think that sometimes the previous group you, you know, just, well, they had a different worldview, I guess. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, I, I think it's an opportunity to work with people. Um, so I appreciate, you know, doing that. I have no problem with this contract, incidentally. That's more of a general comment about, you know, some of the issues that have been in the past. Okay. And, and did it, was this a competitive bid process in this situation? Yes. 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 And so part of the conversation, maybe when we talk about the process for supporting local and that could include this as an example of, of the vendors who are, um, were involved in this particular case. And there were any local vendors on the original. And that's here. part of the challenge is that we want to support Take local, time. and if there isn't a local per, uh, vendor available, that obviously has a. My, my, my point would be this may not be the best example because of that. 
Sure. Uh, but I still think that the scoring, uh, an analysis of the scoring system is a good approach. Um, and then overall, the policy uh, direction expressed by Pulowski and Henry makes sense. And then the utilization of shared services is the second part right. among the other. Thank you. Yes. Is there anything else? <laughs> okay, at this time I have a question for the commission. Is there anyone who moves to approve resolution approving addendum one with Eon Enterprises Inc. doing business as Eon Office Products for the annual office supplies? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Um, our third item uh, this morning is a resolution accepting a proposal from Care Here LLC uh, to provide health care services for the employee health clinic. Um, Heidi Elias is here again with purchasing. Good morning again, Commissioners. My name is Heidi Ellis, Purchasing Agent. You have before you a copy of the memo and resolution being presented by me for the employee um, health uh, clinic provider. On July 1, 2014 and February 17, 2015, the Human Resources Department met with the Board of County Commissioners to discuss the county's interest in an employee's health clinic in order to enhance the current health benefits package. County staff conducted a number of on-site visits to existing successful clinics run by other local governments. The county is interested in adding one or two on-site or near-site clinics to support the current employee population and integrate, integrate the current wellness program. The health clinic interest stems from the county manager's management's serious concern about the escalating health care costs and their willingness to explore alternatives which might positively impact the county's health care trends while providing employees new and cost-effective options to address their health care needs. The clinic's object objective will focus on reducing health care trends, improve health care outcomes, both aggregate and individual, increase employees' productivity, reduce absenteeism, provide fit for duty, workers' compensation triad, full workers' compensation, and drug testing. The on-site or near-site clinics is intended to be available to all benefit, eligible employees, and benefited covered dependents. In addition, the selected healthcare clinic provider will have experience and expertise that will enable them to assist Adams County in lowering the cost of its healthcare wire while creating employee engagement and satisfaction. The request for proposal um, for the employee health clinic was posted on Rocky Mountain e-purchasing on August 9th, closed on September 4th, 2014. Six proposals were submitted. They were evaluated on costs, business operation and services, business experience qualification and their approach, quality of performance, reporting and data management. There were two offers shortlisted Care Here LLC and HealthStat Inc. based upon their scores received for their submitted proposals. Each offer was sent a letter with clarification questions for responses on their health clinic and an interview with the evaluation committee. Offer scores are based upon their written proposal, the interview, and the best and final offers responses. The scores for um, Care Here Inc. LLC was 1939 and Health Stat Inc. was 1893. Thank you, Ms. Ellis. Do we have any questions from the county uh, commissioners? Uh, there's a question from Commissioner Hansen. Um, I, I'm just trying to reconcile the numbers here on the fiscal impact uh, piece of it. Um, it says the annual operating cost of $380,000, which is roughly half of the uh, seven 760. I'm kind of assuming reading that information that we're anticipating about six months of operation and that's why it is half of that annual amount. Is that correct? 
Uh, yeah, Brian Osler, Human Resources Director. Uh, Commissioner Hansen, yes, that is correct. We're anticipating the clinic to be open by summer, midsummer, 2015. That, that's that's what I thought because when you look at the expenditures and the approved budget of 650,000 and the capital budget of 100,000, that's also roughly in the same amount. So I wasn't sure if it was matching to that one or the other one. So we really think that it's only $100,000 in capital money to uh, to uh, get that uh, clinic up to speed. Yeah, that's correct. So we're going to utilize the conference center. Um, we already have a lot of the walls already up. Uh, we're working with facilities right now. Um, I think that's a pretty pretty good estimate. Uh, there's not a whole lot of refurbishing or construction that we need to do, other than bringing in some probably some electrical and some some plumbing in there. Uh, I was just kind of surprised because you know medical equipment can be kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. So is that included in this cost too? It's included in the cost. It's it's the startup cost within you know everything that's included. Uh, you know as they state there the. Um, I think it's uh, the the annualized cost is seven hundred fifty seven thousand uh, dollars. The startup cost for it is uh, roughly about thirty five thousand um, dollars, and so the the clinic the vendor the vendor will take care of all of so that. So the vendor's going to provide all of that. Correct. Then, Correct. So we don't have to provide that. Correct. We do buy it, but they they do all of that for us. Okay. And um, and um, I assume they want an agreement with some you know level of renewals. Um, and if they're going to put money up front onto it, you know that that means that they're more into it from a from a risk standpoint. So, you know, what do we anticipate hearing in this subsequent years since we can't do it more on an annual appropriation? Yeah. So uh, the subsequent years. Uh, so year two, the anticipated annualized cost would be about seven hundred nine thousand one hundred thirty six dollars. Um, year three would be about seven hundred twenty seven thousand uh, dollars. Or seven seven twenty seven zero four four. So, so what you're saying is, is that thirty five thousand dollar cost for medical equipment we're actually paying for. So, does that mean that we own that equipment at the mm -hmm. end? If if they uh, don't continue, or Correct. we bring in another vendor, or we don't do the program, that means we own that equipment. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay, I understand. Thanks. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? No. Do I? Uh, here a re uh, motion to approve resolution accepting proposal from Care Here LLC to provide health care services for the employee health clinic. So moved, Commissioner. Second. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. And could I add? Yes. Vice Chair? Commissioner Pulaski? We had a really nice presentation made at, at our uh, study session regarding this. So for those in the audience who think we don't ask questions, we did there. So anyway, they gave a great presentation. And I think this is going to be very beneficial for the employees. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioners. Thank you. Let me add something else. And yes. Commissioner Hansen. I want to ask a question because I actually I think that this was asked at one point to be presented and it never was. Um, it, it wasn't today, I shouldn't say, because um, you know, some of the controversy that could potentially arise from a project like this, which is, you know, fairly expensive in terms of the amount, is why are you doing this? Um, and, and, you know, there was uh, an analysis done in terms of the return on investment. And frankly, it should have been part of this presentation because we should be discussing these kinds of things in a more public forum like this uh, and not just in a study session when it is an expenditure that's this big. Um, and it's related specifically to, uh, you know, employee benefits, and a lot of people are going to question whether or not that's a good idea. So, can you talk a little bit about? And I apologize for adding this onto it, uh, Jan, but you reminded me. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what what we're trying to accomplish and what the re return is with this? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, absolutely, commissioners. Uh, one of the things too to note, it is in the the agenda items, um, the presentation and stuff, so that is available. Um, you know, for the public to view on the website. Uh, the, key, the key principle with this is that, you know, over the last three or four years, uh, as, as most um, organizations um, within Mountain State stated, one of the biggest concerns for any public entity is the, the rising cost of health care. Um, we're, we're not immune to that. Um, we've experienced some, some increases over the last couple of years. Uh, and, and the whole point, uh, just this last year, as a good example, we're about uh, 1.5 million dollars over budget. So that's taken into an account for our United Healthcare plan, uh, our self-funded. That um, all of the the.
premiums that we collect and then the claims that we have to pay out, we were about $1.5 million short. Um, and, and that has to do with a lot of different factors. Uh, but some of the key factors is that we're seeing within, as with most organizations uh, in, in the Denver metro area and even nationally, uh, some of the leasing, leading cost uh, indicators are things that we've identified within our, our employee population, such as obesity, depression, diabetes, heart disease, and back pain. The whole fundamental principle behind uh, a health clinic is that we believe that over the years we can control these claims a little bit better. We can be more proactive and strategic in that sense. The, the health clinic will allow us to understand what our current um, employee uh, population is in terms of high risk, low risk, or no risk. Uh, by doing a, a health risk assessment, a biometric screening. So the average employee that needs to go to the health clinic to treat you know, a sore throat, they'll go there and, and they'll spend about eight minutes uh, treating the acute issue. And the rest of the time they will be addressing uh, chronic disease management. Uh, if, if an employee is close to pre-diabetic, pre uh, they will be able to help incentivize them to be able to come back over to a more healthy, a more productive employee, which then leads to lower claims in the future. Uh, that's the fundamental principle behind uh, a health clinic. We believe uh, within you know, two to three years, uh, we will see a substantial return on investment for the dollars that we're putting into this uh, within the first year. Uh, with the experience of, of the companies that are out there, you're looking at about, for each dollar that you put in, getting back a dollar and 42 cents. And again, as time goes on and as employees change those behaviors and we manage those chronic disease better, then you'll see a, a larger return on investment. In particular, the ones that we looked at from other organizations within year three, four, and five, you see a substantial return on investment for that money. So it sounds like that there's uh, that really what's driving this is the fiscal impact and the long-term fiscal benefits to help justify the people benefits. Is that correct? <laughs> That's correct. I mean, it, they play hand in hand. Uh, it's so important to have healthy employees um, and healthy dependents. And, and you get a more productive employee, you get a happier employee. Uh, and so as part of that, that really ties into the fiscal impact. Um, by employees that are healthier, they're not going to have these larger claims that are are our issue right now as an organization. I think what we're finding out, and this is Steve Odoricio, we're finding that the, uh, more access to healthcare in these clinical environments is starting to pop up in a lot of locations where there are a lot of employees. We're also finding them in schools, community centers, and so uh, part of the presentation that I specifically remember when you came during that study session uh, covered that, that this is a, a growing trend to address these issues more proactively, um, try to obtain some long-term economic benefits um, to address, uh, to, I guess, to counter some of those rising costs of health care. Uh, in addition, just to simply, it's another benefit for our employees, which I think we're finding is a, a significant uh, and, a loft, and a good goal for us to uh, move toward, not only for productivity, but also support for our greatest assets which are the people that work for us. So I want to thank you for that. The last question I would have, though, is um, where would somebody obtain, a citizen obtain this presentation if they want to do it? Would it be that they would go and find the agenda item from the uh, study session? Or if you could tell um, on the record where a citizen could get the presentation that you're referring to? Yeah, so I do believe it's it's not OK. Well, I'll, we'll work internally, and we'll, we'll make it available. Um, and. Uh, as part of the agenda item. Okay, so it could either be added to the agenda item for today yeah. and or added to the uh, link uh, on the day the study session occurred on this particular matter or uh, either way, if you could post that, uh, it sounds like staff can make that happen. Thank you very much. Is there any other, que are there any other questions from other commissioners? Yeah. With that said, I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Are there any updates from the county attorney? Good morning, commissioners. Uh, no new business, but I would ask that you go into executive session today as time allows, pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 2464024B and E, for the purpose of negotiations and receiving legal advice regarding potential development at DIA. Do I hear a motion to, uh, do I hear a does anybody move to approve that motion to adjourn into executive session uh, pursuant to the Colorado Revised Statute uh, described by the county attorney? So moved. 
Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Is there, is there any other new business? We're going to move on to uh, land use, land use hearings. At this time, we're going to adjourn for five minutes. Would that be enough? Five minutes for us to uh, get set up, and uh, we'll readjourn at 10:10 a.m. Thank you.